Hey y'all, welcome back to the Q with Q's podcast. Before we jump in, um, just make sure you're subscribed because we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot that's coming down the pipe with just so many things that's happening in this election year, uh, so many moving parts to things that we need to know about. So definitely make sure you are subscribed on the YouTube if you're listening to this on like Spotify, Apple. Thank you so much. Um, and also down to the Patreon, I actually have a free Patreon. Uh, so if you make your way to any of my socials and go to the link in my bio and go to the Patreon, you can join for free and get a lot of the free content. There is going to be some exclusive content there, but um, a lot of this will be there. And some bonus things that I'm not going to share on any other platform will be there, but they'll be free. Um, so head on over to the, the Patreon. You can just Google Quentin R. Giles Patreon and uh go from there so thank you all so very much for being here <sighs> man um one of the things that was just on my mind really was this project 2025 um alongside of what is going on with the fearless fund and outright before i get into some of the specifics not everything but outright there is a clear and present attack um, not only on, you know, black women, black people at large, but just people at large. It seems as though as this society, as America continues to get more diverse, um, as more people of color, which I've talked to you all before, I kind of have, I take issue with lumping all of us in into this one saying, but for the purposes of trying to make my point here is people of color are, you know, really breaking out of the shackles of poverty and being uneducated and you know moving up in corporate structures and opening business businesses thriving even with eggs being as high as giraffe nicks there seems to be a lot of anger and vitriol from racist white people uh and one thing that the republicans have done very very well is other rise everyone else in really make their base believe that everyone, their racist white base, believe that everyone else is the enemy and everyone else is the reason as to why, you know, they are not living the quote unquote American dream, which I don't even know what that is anymore. I did a video on my TikTok the other day because I was like, what is even the American dream anymore? I don't know. If someone can tell me, I would love to hear it. Um, But they've done a really good job of convincing their voters that everyone else is to blame and really it's the politicians themselves that are not either are not enacting laws or following through on laws that benefit the people think about obamacare which is really the aca republican states turned down millions of millions of dollars to expand medicaid in the state so that poor people it didn't matter whether you were black brown white yellow, Martian, it doesn't matter. Well, I guess a Martian wouldn't be a person, but you understand what I'm saying. But that poor people would have insurance, like medical insurance, like the basic stuff. And now, you know, those people sometimes hoop and holler because we're seeing rural hospitals closing. So people don't have access to care. Well, <laughs> The way in which that got there is because your Republican representative, your Republican governor, wouldn't take the money that the federal government was giving to increase access to vital and critical services to you because they didn't want the black man, the black president to get a win or they didn't want Democrats to get a win. And this is not to say that Democrats are perfect, but they're because they're not. It is to say, though, that Republicans have convinced, convinced, excuse me, their own voters to vote against their best interest. And in that, there has just been, it, the, the cultural war has just increased so very much, um, so, so very much just to, to me, what it feels like is an attack. Like, an attack. Because people are not at large are not in a destitute state in the way in which some racist white people think that they should be. Now, I'm not saying that that does not mean that people are not struggling because again, eggs is high as giraffe nicks. Baby child care is, I can't, I'm, I am confused. Like, 
<laughs> we basically pay for a luxury vehicle for childcare. And I just, I, baby, I didn't know. I was like, oh, I'm in the wrong business. We might need to open up us a daycare ourselves because we're, 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 we're paying G-Wagon prices with no G-Wagon. <laughs> Where's my G-Wagon? You know? <laughs> so, S-Class prices on the Mercedes. Come on, someone. Come on, talk to me today. Um, so, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, you know, economically everything is good for everybody. What I am saying is that we see that more people of color, again, for the sake of making this argument, people of color are doing better financially than they have in the past. And that's bothering some people. That's bothering some people. Like, look at the Fearless Fund. These two black women who decided that they were going to give $20,000 grants to black women of uh, businesses um, because black people are left out of or not left out of, but are severely underfunded when it comes to venture capital. Venture capital is basically take person A, I got a bunch of money. Person B is the entrepreneur who has a business. They're coming to me instead of trying to get like a loan, you know, from the bank to get their business off the ground or to expand their business. They're coming to a venture capital fund or a venture capitalist. So either a person that has the money or a collective of people that have money that come together with the sole purposes of investing. Think Shark Tank, right? The sharks are sitting there. They're technically venture capitalists, right? And then sometimes they connect two sharks or three sharks or four sharks, go in on one deal, venture capital to the people. They're investing. That, that's really what it is. They're investing in the business in hopes that they will receive a return, right? What we see by the data that black people and particularly black women are getting like 1% of venture capital of the billions of dollars that are spent or that is given to companies every year. 1%. So... Instead of, you know, screaming and hollering about not getting it, these two black women set out on a mission to fund these black businesses. And let's be clear, $20,000 for a business. Let me preface because I've run a business. I've run my own business. Uh, my wife and I have uh, run a business. $20,000 is not a lot of money. And I'm going to explain that. It is like... It is if you're not running a business, right? Like, especially if we're working nine to five jobs, um, $20,000, that's a lot of money to us. But as far as a business goes, it's not because there's so much overhead in running most businesses. Some businesses have low overhead, but there's so much that goes into it because if it's, is it just you that's doing all the work or do you have someone on staff that you have to pay? Okay, $20,000 is only going to get you so much that you're paying another person. Do you have pay? What systems do you have to use? Like, right, we might have used QuickBooks and then we might use some type of, uh, well, we do use a, an accounting software in QuickBooks, but there may be like some scheduling software. You got to pay for that. You know, if you are flying to take a business trip because you're meeting someone trying to collab, you have to pay for those things, right? Taxes. You are taxed differently than you are when you are uh, working like a W-2 job. So those things are different. So $20,000 can get eaten up. And that, I'm not even scratching the surface on things that businesses have to pay for. But $20,000 can really can get eaten up in like a month. Maybe even for, for, for and I'll just be a little transparent for us in well, my, my wife's business, we could probably like if, it, if we got a $20,000 grant, that would probably carry us two and a half months. Like if we didn't make any other money, to make sure we pay all the things that we have to pay. This is We're not talking about taking a personal check. We're talking about pay all the commitments that we have to pay, the people that work for us, the systems that we use to make sure that the business is functioning, the marketing to make sure our name is out there. 20K will probably last us two months, probably. So it's not a whole lot of money that we're talking about, but these women set out to do something, right? It, to do something and they should be commended for that. And what we saw was the same organization that sued uh, the, the, the same conservative <laughs> white man led organization that sued um, to go to the federal government to overturn affirmative action, sued them to say that the fund was discriminatory because they are specifically trying to give money to a specific group of people. And basically that's not fair. That's what the lawsuit basically said. And the appeals court has put the fund on hold, which drag drop another situation. What if I have $5,000 right now and there is a special Olympics 
um, going on and a uh, special needs athlete needed to go, but they needed sponsorship. And I decided that I was going to create a fund to specifically uh, give grants to special needs athletes so that they can go to the Special Olympics. What this lawsuit is saying is that I couldn't do that because I'm not opening that money up to all athletes. Well, we're not talking about all athletes right now. We're talking about a specific underserved class of people for a specific thing. That's what we're talking about. Um, but again, like I said in my opening, there are racist white people in powerful positions that don't want to see people that have come from a historically downtrodden background rise. And that's just facts. And it's facts based off of their actions. It's not facts just because I want people to vote for Democrats. It's facts, excuse me, it's facts based off of their actions, the things they're showing us, the things they're telling us, the, the laws that they want to enact, the, 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 the plans that they have, Project 2025, right? which is, an, I think it's a thousand page document, so I'm not going to go through all of it, but basically it is a manifesto, if you will, of plans that they want the next conservative Republican president to enact, like gutting the federal government, like gutting civil, ser civil service workers, like dismantling the FBI and trying to stop the FBI from... Uh, what did I read? Trying to stop the FBI from making sure that false information doesn't spread because they believe that the FBI has no business policing free speech. What? They're trying to stop lies from spreading so that people won't be fooled. But you're viewing it as free speech, right? So you're trying to go after them. Trying to target women who get abortions. And we can have a whole conversation. And I think sometimes people are... Um, Sometimes people are confused when they hear my stance on abortion. Just because I vote Democrat does not... It, and, and I've met a lot of Democrats. I really, really have. I've talked to a lot of Democrats who don't necessarily agree with abortion. I'm one of them. I think that there... I think that there are cases where medical necessity, where it, it is a thing and we need to be able to save the life of mom and baby, however that works out, Right. I talk to my wife a lot and I'm like, I just wonder if a new word needs to be created because the term abortion has been so politicized has been in, to where women's health is still in danger. But I say that to say this is not an, an abortion episode, but I say that to say there are people that vote Democrat that don't believe in or don't agree with the idea of that. You know, abortion should just be a thing just because you want one. But do stand on the side that, hey, there might be a medical issue at play that could severely damage or kill the woman. So why would we not intervene in that? And, you know, so anyway, but this Project 2025 is not even valuing the dignity of women. They, they, they claim it is for the protection of the unborn, but I have a hard time believing that because if you cared about the protection of the unborn, you would also care once the bo unborn is born to have policies in place, laws in place to protect them, to ensure that they have a good quality of life, i.e. healthcare. Going back to the beginning of this video or this podcast, however you're, you're, you're viewing this or listening to this. So it's not adding up. It's not adding up. Just say you want you want people to have children, but you actually don't care about the children. That That's what it is. But anyway, Project 2025 is um, in their manifesto regarding abortion is really trying to criminalize women who get them without making any distinction of was it necessary or was it a want? It doesn't matter. They just want a blanket criminalization of it. Um Gutting the Department of Education, again, going towards us talking about the unborn and how you care about the unborn. You don't care about children. That, that's what it is. You don't care about children because they want to gut the Department of Education. They want to privatize the education system. Um, you will hear a lot of Republicans, particularly governors. I'm here in Texas, so a Republican governor talk about school vouchers and school choice and all those things. And the, the wording sounds good, right? When you say it, it's like, yeah, school choice. I want to be able to choose what school my kid goes to. The idea, in short, is that they would take those tax dollars that we would normally pay and that would go to the public school system to say, here's a voucher. This is the money that you would have paid. You go pick the school you want. 
Well, if public schools are no longer funded, that means they crumble. So the only other schools that are left are public and charter schools, right? Well, I mean, I'm sorry, not public, excuse me, private schools that want to privatize the education. The only schools that are left are private schools. Well, private schools don't have to abide by certain state mandates, meaning they get to choose who they pick or who they allow into their school. So in what world do we believe that if we do away with public school, that the private schools that are already in existence, right, are going to allow an influx of black, brown, and indigenous children into those schools? So yeah, you got the voucher. Yeah, you can choose now, but your options are limited because who's to say they're gonna let your kid in? And if they do let your kid in, who's to say they're gonna let your kid stay? Who's to say a hair violation is not going to get your kid kicked out? Then where does your kid go? So it's a scam. It sounds good, but it's a, it is a scam. Unless we're talking about changing the laws, particularly here in Texas or in other states. I don't know where they do it, how they do it elsewhere. But here in Texas, unless we're talking about changing the law so that private schools must operate in a, in a similar manner to public schools, then it's a scam. And then even going back to what I said earlier about Republicans convincing their constituents to vote against their own interests. Y'all are so scared about the other. Y'all got people so scared about gay folks in the school, trans, trans folks in the school, immigrants in the school, black people in the school. What school y'all going to go to in these rural areas? You already got hospitals closing because you're so far in the middle of nowhere, but you keep voting for the people that's going to dismantle everything that you actually need so when public schools crumble where are your children going to go where so <laughs> you know i think that we have to push back um we need, a, we need a generation of people that will go and run for office um, to really protect the least of these, the least of us. To me, that's the only way it makes sense. That's the only way everybody is protected. One, for me, it's biblical to protect and to look out for the least of us. And then just very practically, if the least of us are taken care of, how much more than everybody else who is not the least? You understand what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, I, I, I just think that there is a there is a full blown attack on us that that is here. It's not even coming. It's here. It's here. It's here. They're they're putting it out. They have manifestos. <laughs> they are actively looking for candidates to to enact these policies actively. Um, and we just need people to not only stand up and run for these offices so that they can be in the positions of power, but also for us to vote. There are way too many people talking about not voting, um, not understanding the implications of not voting. Um, and it, it, it truly can be detrimental. Look at 2016. Look at the four years we had with Trump like really reflect the four years of chaos that we had with Trump. He let a million Americans die because he kept lying about COVID and didn't want to tell us. Don't talk to me about PPP and STEMIs. Well, no, do talk to me about PPP because I gave out billions of dollars, again, to businesses and rich people without a blink of an eye, without a blink of an eye, but it was so hard to even get STEMI checks to folks. And then, even then, look at how you're treating people on the back end. But outside of that, a million Americans died. To me, that's blood on that man's hands. Out of all the things he's done, the, 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 the sex scandal with the porn star, the cheating on his wife, the, you know, the Lafayette Square when, when we were protesting George Floyd, you know, uh, causing friction and tension between our international partners, all the things, all the things, talking about African countries, grabbing women by the P word, 
lying, just vulgar, all the, all the things, horrible. One thing I will never forget is that he let a million Americans die. That is to be that is blood on his hands because there was something that could have been done and he lied about it and did not act. Did not act because you wanted the country to continue to run because you care about money. We print the money here anyway. We print it here anyway. So we could always we, we could have always rebounded. But people lost their lives. I'm very serious about that. People lost their lives um, because of his lies and because of his refusal to act. So we need to vote <laughs> and we need to impress upon people the importance of why we need to vote. Because it can get real dangerous out here real quick if he get back in. And I, I just, I just don't know. So yeah those are my thoughts i hope y'all are well um make sure you register to vote make sure your family and your friends and your your sphere of influence that they're registered to vote and until then y'all make sure you subscribe please thank you so much all the love um again the patreon on the youtube and uh i will see you all next time this has been the Q with Q with your... Oh, I didn't even do my intro. This has been the Q with Q <laughs> with your friend Q. Well, my name is Quentin, but if we're going to be friends, you got to call me Q. So until next time, y'all, I love y'all. Y'all be safe. <laughs>